Look, I don't know if Chairman Powell was really downbeat. I think Chairman Powell was trying to be realistic to what the Fed is seeing in the economy. Remember, we're still in a recovery period from an unprecedented time in our history. And the way this recovery is happening is really bifurcated. You've got the large companies in America, which is the Dow or the S&P, and they're seeing one set of circumstances. They're seeing a fairly robust business environment which in to operate. And they're seeing you know, customers almost being forced to them because their local Main Street competitors have been shut down. On the flip side, you're seeing small businesses in America, especially small family-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, they're still not open. And even to the extent they're open, at least where I have been recently, you know, they're open on a very small scale. They're open for curbside only. Or if you're in the restaurant business, you're open for outdoor seating only with, with very limited amount of availability. So we are really seeing a bifurcated economy. And I thought that the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve yesterday tried to portray a realistic picture of what we're living through. Do you think the market overshot it, Gary, on the optimism? Look, markets always overshoot. We probably overshot on the downside, and we probably overshot on the upside. So if you look at where we are right now, we, we, we've come back down around 8% or so from the highs, but we're still up over 35% for the lows. We're in the period where we're trying to find a relative fair value for equity. That doesn't mean they can't go lower, and it doesn't mean they can't go higher. We're trying to digest right now what value should be. Um, I want to play another clip quickly, uh, Gary, from uh, Secretary Mnuchin's appearance this morning on, on Squawk on the Street, separate from what uh, Kayla uh, played earlier. Let's take a listen. We can't shut down the economy again. I, I think we've learned that if you shut down the economy, you're going to create more damage, and, and not just economic damage, but there are, there are other areas, and we've talked about this, of medical problems and everything else that get put on hold. I think it was very prudent what the president did, but I think we've learned a lot. G Gary, do you think that's... Uh Act accurately priced into markets, the idea that uh, it, it would take an extraordinarily big spike in cases and deaths to see the economy shut down again. Look, I think what Secretary Mnuchin said today is what the vast majority of people are thinking. We did what we thought was completely right with the information and knowledge we had back in March. Now that it's June and going forward, we have a different set of information facts. And as we see new outbursts of COVID or we see new spread, we're going to treat it differently, knowing what we know now. We're much smarter today than we were in, in, in March. We're going to attack it differently. We're going, to, we're going to change the way we react. We're going to do different things in the economy. I do think the market is understanding that. I'm not sure we're, we're past the first wave, though, Gary. I mean, one of the concerns out there is that, you know, these, these cases are spiking in Texas and Arizona. And, you know, in Arizona, the hospitals are, are starting to get yeah. full. We're, we're not even in the fall where the medical experts were warning of the second wave. So I think the question is, do, do we have to recalibrate the expectations for the economic recovery if consumer behavior starts to change as some of these states still deal with the, the surge? Sarah, I, I don't think anyone has declared the, the first or initial wave over. I think we're, we're in a continuation of the first wave. It's taking longer to go away. But look, we're, we're diversifying the, 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 the virus. It's spreading out. It's, it's now in different states. It's not concentrated in the northeast. It's now concentrated a little bit in the southeast or southwest. So it's moving geographically around the country. But we're still in the first wave, and, and no one has ever declared the first wave over. I think we're all trying to guess what's going to happen in the fall. It just may be one long continuation with, with, with spikes and, and then um, subsidence, subsiding and then spiking again. But the question is, what's the amplitude and what's the magnitude of those moves? Have we seen the highest spike? Hopefully we've seen the highest spike. And future spikes are going to be much lower than what we've seen in, in the initial wave. Gary, I wanted to switch focus a little bit and talk about uh, the banks in, in your old shop, uh, Goldman Sachs in particular. Earlier this week, uh, Monday or Tuesday it was, uh, nearly went positive uh, for the year so far, the share price did. Th does that make sense to you? I mean, I know we're selling off today, but 
Uh, does it make sense to you uh, that Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, for that matter, could, could be flat roughly year to date? Are they going to have very profitable years despite the turmoil? Look, I'm going to speak about the banks in general. That's all I know is the banks in general. Look, there has been a lot of lending activity going on in the corporate world. So banks involved in the corporate world and the corporate finance world, both in the equity capital markets, debt capital markets, they have been pretty active in spite of what's going on. There's been an enormous amount of capital raised. So banks are, are, are quite busy in their, in their corporate business. On the consumer side, we're also seeing more activity. Activity has come off the recent lows. And I think you saw most of the bank CEOs in some of the recent conferences say, look, based on where they think the economy is now and what they hope the economic data is going to look like and unemployment data is going to look like going forward, they think they're close to properly reserved. If they're properly reserved, they're close to properly reserved, banks could continue to do fairly well going forward. But remember, we're in a different economic environment than we've ever been in before, so no one knows for sure what the future holds. Banks are serving their clients every day. They're lending money where they see appropriate, and they're serving their clients, and there is activity going on. A lot of that activity, Gary, though, isn't it due to the fact that the government, you know, to their credit, moved really quickly to, to disperse relief in the form of the stimulus checks and the, the PPP small business program? I mean, these programs do run out, the extra bump in unemployment benefits. We're, we're looking to the next few months when these, some of these programs have expiration dates. Then what's the economy going to look like if they don't get extended? So absolutely. Look, the, the government stimulus program that they put in was completely necessary, and we should all applaud the ability for the government to move quickly and get involved in the economy and send the stimulus out. You're right. Many of these programs have relatively short duration. The original PPP money was eight weeks. And so if you were a company that got original PPP money, you could be at the end of that, that money and you could literally be running out. So the numbers that we saw last week in the unemployment numbers, they may look different a month from now when the companies that took original PPP money were able to keep their employees on they may not be able to keep their employees on without future money or without some more expansion of the economy, which I don't see happening that quickly in the smaller businesses that were able to take the PPP money. So, look, I believe, like I think everyone else, the government's going to have to come back with another round of stimulus. We're going to learn from the first couple rounds of stimulus what worked, what was necessary, and hopefully the government will follow up on those pro programs that worked with additional funding. Finally, Gary, when you were in the administration, uh, there was plenty of reports about how, how you were upset over the way that the president handled Charlottesville, the both sides comments in particular as it related to white nationalist protesters. You know, I, we're reliving this a little bit on some of the, the race issues. When the Atlanta mayor said that President Trump's Lafayette Park cleaning was like Charlottesville all over again, I mean, did that resonate with you? Do you expect resignations from the administration? Look, I don't. I don't know what to expect from the administration. You know, I think each individual working in the administration has to make a decision for them for themselves if they want to be there, why they want to be there. Can they do more good by being in the administration than not being in the administration? And these are very personal decisions. Many people go to work in administrations to serve their country and serve the citizens and try and make an Amer America a better place for everyone. And these are tough decisions to go into administrations and leave your current role, and they're even tougher decisions to leave. Gary, thanks for joining us. I guess us. what I'm wondering is, what were you thinking when, when, when you saw that, that Lafayette Park episode? Look, it, it, it was tough to watch many of the things that we've been forced to watch, and, and look, deservedly forced, and I'm glad that we were forced to watch these things in the last couple of weeks. We as a country are going to come out better for having gone through this, but now we have to make the changes. We cannot let this just be an isolated moment. We have to use this as a leveraging moment for the history of the country. We will indeed leave it there this time, Gary, and we appreciate, as ever, uh, you coming to join us in your candor. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks.